Risk reward. If you're like me and you're a little more of an aggressive driver, you may create some nemesis personalities on the track. If I frustrate or annoy drivers a lot, they enter what we call the nemesis state. Nemesis will, well, let's face it, they don't like you anymore. Uh, polite racing has gone. They will try to take your racing line into a corner and break and block you. And they will certainly get an improvement to their skill to try and catch you up. They've got better because they are just absolutely going to overtake and beat you. You can create, if you're me, up to five nemesises in a race. We have rivals. Rivals are essentially the cars that finish above you, or if you finish first, they're the ones that finish before you. So what rivals are there for is to give you an idea of the previous race, how you did, and, and who your biggest competitor is. If you beat your rival, you're improving. We have 400 AI drivers. 72 of those you are able to choose as your team partner. AI drivers all have a driving skill level, how they take corners, how they exit corners, when they break, when they don't break, how aggressively they take the corners, how fair play they are. The 72 team drivers, they have an additional quality which is loyalty to you. So you can genuinely select a racer who hates you from the start, will be your nemesis from the moment of the beginning. Or you can pick a driver who's super loyal to you and no matter what you order him to do, he will absolutely respond. The engineer will even say sometimes, he's turned his radio off, I don't think he's uh, listening to you anymore. Or, yes, he'll absolutely do that. Then you'll see, in game, the AI attempt to overtake, to block for you, to get out of your way, so look for that. And what this does is it then contributes to the stories, those motorsport stories. You're in a pack, each of the pack has personalities. Some of those personalities are very distinct with very distinct actions. So one thing we also want to announce is we're really privileged to have a Formula F1 champion, Alonso, in our game. One great thing you get about having a talent such as his in the game is his knowledge of cars, how they drive, what happens in motorsport, what happens on the track, personalities, even to advanced things like advanced driving techniques. Along the way, Alonso's work with us to steer us and educate us in the areas which only a, a champion can. We have the choreographer. Choreographer works in two ways. One is based on mistakes. So every driver is fallible. They all have different levels of driving skill. Some will make more mistakes than others. And mistakes would be spin outs, colliding with other cars, and in extreme circumstances, maybe even colliding and flipping. The other side of the choreographer is a mechanical breakdowns for the AIs. Now, we've all watched motorsport and mechanical failures are part and parcel of motorsport. Cars can break down. On top of that, we have damage. Cars don't start pristine. This is motor racing. We start your cars with knocks, scrapes, bangs, paint missing. And as you go through the race, this continues, as does damage. Bonnets will loosen, bonnets will fly off, boots will uh, fly open, then slam shut and rattle. You'll see doors swing open and then, and then rattle. So the cars are very representative of damage. So when we approach grid, we started with the handling. And basically it's really important to us that looking back on the other games, that we produce a handling system that feels more in line with the original grid, more in line with the variety we show for the game. We have so many different cars, so many different car classes. What we really didn't want the player to encounter is they play stock cars and they go to the GT class and they have to relearn the handling all up. We wanted a core, essentially grid spirit to the handling that is at the base that feels familiar when you pick up any new car. So in our game, when you play, you're gonna see that when you're on a street course of muscle cars, it's much more car to car, rubbing is racing. Whereas when you get to the GTs, it's more polite, more true motorsport feeling of getting the corners right and making sure you keep your racing right. The main thing here is you've paid your money for this game. I want you to enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. And that's important to me. Say you're more of a GT racer versus a stock car racer. Well, you don't need to do the stock car. You can play them another time or not at all. And you can finish and get through to the Grid World Series without having to play it. We don't force you to play everything. We just want you to play and enjoy what you want to enjoy. Out of the box, we turn the assists on. We choose your tuning and we put it to the average difficulty. If you're a sim hardcore player, you can put the difficulty up to the maximum. We have five difficulty levels right now. You can also turn off all the assists in the game. So you can make it as hard and as challenging as you like, if that's what you enjoy. On the flip side, if even out of the box, you would like a more laid back racing experience, you can bring down the difficulty and enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. We want this game, we want everyone to have fun with Grid. Whether you're a casual arcade player, you're a serious sim player, you want all the assists turned off, or you're a casual, you want all the assists turned on, we want you to have fun with this game. If everyone has fun, and has fun motor racing with good motor racing stories, we'll have succeeded. 
Interested in seeing more Grid? Then why not check out the reveal trailer or some gameplay footage?